You're listening to the Feminine Business School podcast, and I'm your host, Ainsley Young. My work is all about creating a wildly pleasurable and successful business without burning out your body and selling out your soul. I'm also really passionate about ditching the cookie cutter marketing strategies and finding what feels good to you when it comes to marketing. Join me as we talk all things online business, feminist marketing strategies, feminine embodiment, conscious leadership, and pleasurable productivity. Hit subscribe now and let's get started. And to learn the secret to fitting more pleasure into each day while ticking off your to-dos, download my free pleasure and productivity weekly planner. Head to startingwitha.com slash opt-in. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Feminine Business School podcast. I am your hostess, Ainsley Young, and I hope you have enjoyed the guest interviews that I have shared over the past few weeks. I know I've been receiving some really beautiful feedback and it's just so wonderful to have these really deep, important conversations when it comes to life and business. But today I have a solo episode. And I thought it would be helpful to share what it is that I am currently working on personally and something that my mentor shared an exercise or a dare with me and what has shifted for me. So essentially, I'm going to tell you a little story and that what has landed from there and you can take from it what you will. So last week, my mentor gave me this really wild task to do. And it was to dress up in my most outlandish outfit that I could find and to go out in public. Now, where this came from was what I was sharing in the Voxer group in this high-end mastermind. I mean, there was just like such a state of contraction and control. And I will be the first to admit that I can be a control freak. And a lot of the work that I have been doing personally over this year is really looking at where this need for control And this sense of safety is coming from. So some of it has come from birth trauma. And then the work that I did with this birth trauma therapist, it's really come from a lot of the conditioning that I've had between the ages of one to seven. So for me, like many, having control, having a plan helps me feel safe. Now, we all know that in business, things are always changing and we cannot control everything, right? And this is where the work that I've been doing myself and is what I share with my clients around the saboteur archetype and the magician archetype really come in. So my mentor was inviting me to really step into my magician. So it was late on a Tuesday night because the time difference between Singapore and the UK. I was like, yep, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. No worries. I can absolutely dress up in my most outlandish outfit and go out in public. And then I was laying there trying to go to sleep. What did I do? I started to plan everything. I was like, okay, what am I going to wear? Where am I going to go? What time should I go? What should I do before and after? And I was planning it. And I was like, hang on a second, Ainsley. This is not the point. It really is about trust and leaning into the unknown. So the unknown of how people are going to react, how I am going to feel. And the second biggest thing that I knew I was going to get out of this experience was really not giving an F about what people think and really showing up as my whole self. Okay, I'll come back to that. So Wednesday morning, I thought, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it when it felt good. And I had the Feminine Business Mastermind group coaching session in the afternoon. And I remembered that Dante had this box of dress up clothes that I had bought for, I think, her third birthday party so all the kids could dress up and have some fun. And in it was this horrendous Afro wig that was all multicolored. I thought I'm going to put that on. And then these glasses, just the rims and these weird disco ball earrings attached. And I thought, I'm just going to do it now. So I got on the Feminine Business Mastermind group coaching call like that, and I didn't say anything to any of the clients. You know, a lot of them were smiling and laughing and they're asking like why I had done that. And I said, I'll just get to it at the end. And really, I felt so alive, looking like a fool, and it brought out this sense of playfulness and fun and ease and just childlike wonder, which so many of us are disconnected from over the years of conditioning. And it felt really fun and liberating. And at the end, I explained to everybody in the sessions, my clients just thought it was wild, it was magnificent, they really loved it. 
And even one of the clients on there, she was going through a really tough time personally, which always escalates, often always escalates into business. And she said to me afterwards, the shift that we had created together, like a really embodied shift into owning her importance as a woman and as a business owner and owning the importance of her work, my crazy get up really helped for her to feel grounded as well as being able to tap into this magician energy. So it just shows that there was resonance there and my energy was having an impact on my clients, which is amazing. Then to continue the story, so I got off that call and then I had to go and get Xanthi from school. And this was the big test. I'm like, I'm going to go and collect Xanthi from school and do this school pickup. I was in my office, James was out in the dining room, so I had to walk past James while he was on a call to go and collect Xanthi. And James actually saw what I was wearing and he stopped the call and said, Ainsley, what are you doing? And I just turned around and smiled and said to him, it's an experiment. He was like, what type of experiment? Like, what are you doing? I said, don't worry. And I just left. And my heart was racing because it means for me to go and do school pickup, to go down in our condo elevator, walk past the pool. So walk past all the people in our condo, walk past all of the security guards that I see every single day, multiple times a day as I go in and out of our condo, which I did, and then walk along our road past people I see all of the time. And I could just see everybody turning their head and staring. And it felt wild. My heart is racing now as I say it. All eyes were on me, but I just smiled. I was like, okay, I'm just doing this. And it's about a 500 meter walk between where we live and where Xanthi's preschool is. Very lucky. But also I forgot that around that time is peak playground time because it was about four o'clock in the afternoon and I had to walk through this main playground in our area. And so there's parents from all walks of life there and all of the aunties and all of the little kids. And as I walked through the playground, all the kids turned around. Some of them were staring, some were laughing. All of the auntie was like, what the F is this woman doing? But there was this one lady, a foreigner, who was fixing her bike, like she was playing with something on her bike, and she turned around and looked at me and she just gave me the biggest smile. I can picture her face so clearly now. I've never seen her before. And just the biggest smile, didn't say anything. And I just kept going and I was smiling and continuing on walking down this main road. And then I walk into the schoolyard and it was like the nursery, I think nursery two. So they're about three. And of course they think it's wild and they also think there's nothing wrong with it. But then there was two little girls and they were whispering, they were saying like, why is Xanthi's mummy dressed up so funnily? But then the teachers out in the playground, including Xanthi's teachers, and they were like, is this a new look? And Singaporeans can be known as quite conservative, so I wasn't sure how they were going to react. They were just like, what are you doing? Like, and one teacher actually thought that I actually got my hair done like that, which is quite crazy. And then I explained to them about just not caring what people think and just going with the flow and having fun. And they absolutely loved it, again, which was really heartwarming. And they wanted to know why I was doing it and how it felt. And then I was waiting for Xanthi and I was getting quite nervous because I didn't want to upset her or embarrass her. And she came out wide eyed. She's like, mommy, what are you doing? And I explained to her that I'm just having some fun and I don't really care that I look silly. It's funny, like it's made people smile, it's made people laugh. And we just really need to own all of ourselves in order to claim our worth as a human, as a woman, as a business owner, and to really just not care what people think. And that a sense of play and pleasure and magic is just so, so empowering. And then we walked home And I just felt so alive. I was buzzing, like I was fizzing from the inside out. And I was really proud of myself that I did it. And it felt incredible. When I got home, like James was like, what's all that about? Like, Why did you do that? And I explained. He was like, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And then one of my friends who was down at the pool, she's like, did I just see you like walk around with a crazy wig on? And I explained to her and she's like, oh, that's just really cool. And then I shared with my mastermind that I'm in. They're like, wow, Ainsley, it didn't take you long to take up that challenge and do it. And I was like, no. And I explained what I got out of it and really just letting go of control. And I had no idea how people were going to react, but I was safe in people's reactions. I wasn't harmed. I'm still alive. I managed to walk through it. And then my mentor asked me a really great question after. She's like, did you get the most out of the experience. And I had also been pondering this because I was like, hmm, would I get more out of the experience if I didn't do it in my little suburb 
and I went somewhere completely different? And would it be more challenging if I did it back in Australia? Because I am used to looking different here in Asia and in Singapore. I have red hair, palish skin, I have freckles. So I do look different. But I think I really did get the most out of the experience because I just got in and did it and I didn't think about it. And also just things that have shifted since then. So many things have just dropped in and even things that my husband is saying to me have changed. Even like the teacher's reactions to me have changed. And it just feels wildly liberating going into different things, not caring if I look silly, not caring if I do a workshop and nobody signs up. Not caring if I try something and it's a big flop. Because I also know it can be really, really magical. The unexpected can be really, really magical. So I hope that this little story, this little share has helped you in some way to kind of move out of that continual controlling, have to know, you know, X, Y, Z, that sense of contraction that comes from control and just an idea of how to move into the magician. You don't have to get into this crazy get up. But it is a really, really cool experiment to do and to play with. And if you are looking for different ways to really grow your business, whether it is to hit six figures or beyond or less in your business, I have an amazing workshop coming up on the 31st of May. So I'm going to be sharing the five key mindset and embodiment shifts to help you create a six-figure business. And this is without sacrificing your body and your health, your morals, your integrity, your word. And I'm really sharing these five significant shifts that I have made to help me create a six-plus-figure business just working three days a week and from a place that feels really good. If you've been following my content lately, you'll know that I am not, like I'm really against this six-figure obsession and six-figure income shaming that goes about, but I know that it is an income level that can create so much freedom within your business and your life and create so much freedom around your choices. And that's what I'm really about. So if this is something that resonates with you, I highly, highly recommend you sign up. There'll be a link in the show notes. I would love to see your face. This is going to be absolutely lit. Like I can feel the energy. It is more of a coaching session and like an amp up motivational session. And I know you will come off this workshop feeling a sense of pure aliveness and power and that what you desire, you can absolutely claim it and you can bring it into the 3D. You can bring it to fruition. So that is my invitation to you. Come and join this workshop, tap into your magician, and I'll speak to you really soon. Thanks so much for listening to today's podcast episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you received some tips and takeaways or maybe a major aha. And if you did, please leave me a quick five-star rating and review in Apple Podcasts. I'd be so, so grateful. And if you'd like to connect, just come and say hi. DM me over on Instagram. You can find me at Ainsley Young. I'll speak with you soon.